Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, the instructor of the Big Data Applications Analytics course, School of Informatics and Computer Data Science Curriculum, course motivation, which is unit two of so section one, which is the introductory section. And we're up to a lesson 11, exploring bags and spaces. And this is a little abstruse, but uh, sort of fun for me. Uh, um, namely, <coughs> We have lots of funny spaces in in big data, because we think of the space of our users, the space of everything sold by Amazon, the space of our movies and Netflix, the space of our words in a given language, and so on. And if we do what's called user-based collaborative filtering, we think of users in a space of dimension n, where every user is. Um, mapped into the items which they purchase. And we have um, it's a pretty large number of users, M users. Maybe M is many millions, for, I mean, tens of millions for Netflix. And each of those has a, has a vector associated running over the uh, movies they've watched. So we have users represented as a vector in this item space. <coughs> and maybe these users uh, have a yes, no, but actually they could have three entries. Never seen the item, so that's sort of a neutral uh, comment. Dislike this uh, movie or like the movie. So they have a ranking or not not ranked. It's important not to say not rank is zero, because there's a difference between not seeing a movie and not liking a movie. Um, so. An important issue if we compare users and uh, vectors is unlike normal vector spaces, when you're living in Euclidean space X, Y, and Z, you don't, you never have no entry in Y. You have an extra entry in X, Y, and Z. Because you may not know what it is, but you do have an entry in X, Y, and Z. You're at a particular place. But in the case of this space, it's different. You have a, a this vector equal to the number of items um, in length. And you, you either have an entry in every uh, component of that vector or a not never seen um, flag. And so you use what's called the Pearson coefficient for discussing the uh, relationship between vectors. And this is effectively the distance which only sums over the items which are rated. Then you have an entry for both of these users. And this is used by Amazon, Netflix, Last.fm, and so on. So this is not like your fame. I mean, if you do a Euclidean distance, then you and you put zero if the person didn't rank it, that would give you a very different answer from this one, which is the Pearson coefficient, and it doesn't have the usual properties of distances because it just excludes lots of components. So it violates all the conditions that give you the Euclidean spaces. Um, alternatively, if you do item-based collaborative filtering, you think of items as the as the points, and they're in a space of dimension m where there are m users. And now each item is represented as a vector in a user space, and the ratings of the users are the vector components. And we're looking for items that are near each other as measured between the distance between these vectors, and then. Again, we use what um, is a so-called cosine measure, where we only sum over users, which is the components of the uh, vector, which rate both um, the, the uh, two things we're comparing. So again, these are an example of a funny distance. Uh, the third type of um, thing we have is um, content-based. And then items are represented by vectors in the property space. You know, maybe that has the color, the size, the uh, things like that. And uh, whether it's like in books, the reading age, or whether it highlights uh, Hercule Poirot or some other type of thing, or even the author of the books. And this type of content-based uh, recommender engines, uh, is again, uh, they don't, they again are dumb, think of them as vectors, but um, 
they they don't have quite the same um, features of having lots of non non valid entries, and this is used by Pandora uses content based uh, recommenders, the so called music genome, and again content based um, recommenders are also used by Amazon or Netflix, and so when you look at recommenders, they can be the three major classes, and you can mix them in complicated ways. They're user based, item based, content based. They can be all thought about as points in the space, but the space had different sizes. The size equal to the, the, the number of um, items, the number of users, or the number of properties of items. So there's pretty interesting uh, differences. And it's very useful to think about these points. You don't have to think about the points. And um, when you do a large hadron collider analysis, quite what the points are, because each, each event is different. And so the vector size in the case of LHC is different for each event. So again, it has the same type of features. These are vectors in non-Euclidean spaces. And sometimes these things are called bags to emphasize they're not real spaces. That's particularly true in information retrieval, where you have bags of words. A given document is represented by the words in the document and the number of times each word appears. And you can usually always are looking at distances, because in almost all these problems, you're looking at nearness of, of the items together. Is a given event, uh, or uh, two events Higgs, because they're near each other in some space. Um, is a movie likely to be one I watch because it's near another movie I watch and so on. And we always choose distances which have some properties which are familiar, that distances are bigger than zero. Uh, and also the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from B to A. But they don't have the, some other important properties which are familiar from Euclidean spaces like the so-called triangle inequality. Whether you need the triangle inequality for particular analysis is not so obvious, but uh, there are certain clever methods which only which only which rely on the triangle inequality. Those will not work in these uh, fancy spaces. And here we have the final comment on this uh, field. So we're looking for nearest neighbors in this space in the various uh, ways. For clustering, we're looking at dividing the space into subsets. Subspaces, each space has points that are near each other. In the case of K nearest neighbors, we're finding the K neighbors that are nearest to a particular point. Um, and say, this is the two things. This is the K nearest neighbor described here. You find a fixed number like three or 10 or something items near what you're looking another item or, or, or users that are near another user. And the other one is to divide the space into regions. That's called latent factors or topics in the case of information retrieval. And that's clustering. And those consist of points that are near each other. Um, and there are other related algorithms, Gaussian mixture models, latent semantic analysis, latent directional allocation, which use very sophisticated models, more sophisticated than clustering, to determine topics or latent factors. Uh, which are um, effectively uh, ways of representing spaces and dividing them into regions where the points in the regions are near each other. So in the case of Google News, you want to have all the items that are relevant for the current news item, I know about Ebola, or about uh, the president, or about the election. Uh, it's not just a simple mapping to, to words, it's a complicated set of criteria which is gotten by training by a sub relatively pretty sophisticated analyses, which are represented by these models here. And we will not go into these models in this class, but the more sophisticated uh, machine learning uh, um, course would do that. So thank you very much. This is just telling you, look at distances and look at funny spaces. That's what you'll need in the big data world. And then of course you have to visualize these spaces. That's what we do when we map these spaces into three dimensions so we can visualize them. Thank you very much.